People often assume that leadership means charismatic speaking, for example. Well, the kind of public communication leadership that you and I are doing depends on that, but that's by no means the only way of being an effective leader. I would, I would say it's probably much more akin to what we've been talking about in terms of play. It's like a good leader is someone that who can continually create games and present them to people that they want to play. The impact of this video extends way beyond what it means to be a great leader. It touches on something more central to the human experience, which is how do we find our purpose in life? This is a question that eludes so many of us and we spend an entire life trying to figure out. A good leader is someone that who can continually create games and present them to people that they want to play. And there's lots of ways of doing that. You can do that and be quiet, be quiet. Like I had a, I had a client, a lawyer, he ran a big law firm in Toronto. Um, I worked with lawyers like that for quite a while and they were sent to this little organization I was part of. The value proposition to the law firms was you send me your best people and we'll work to make them 15% more productive, which for those people meant a lot, right? But we work for them, not you. And so then what we were doing with each of these people was radically different. It really depended on the person. And one of the guys that really struck me, he was very, very quiet. And all he did in his office, all he did was go around and listen to people and actually listen. And so he could get wind of interpersonal conflicts of the sort you were describing, you know, the power game conflicts just before they were developing, right? People would tell him what was wrong and because he was listening, he could fix the things that were wrong with just like a tap and a nudge, right? Because he did it before they got out of control. And it was really interesting to watch him operate because it really looked, even to him, like he was doing very little as the manager of this law firm. But what he was doing was exactly the right amount at exactly the right time. And he was doing that because he was like, and his orientation was true. He wanted the firm to function as well as it possibly could. And that's genuinely what he wanted. Jordan Peterson finally lands on the crux of the story he's telling, which is that the reason this manager is so impactful and successful is twofold. One, because he is he has dedicated himself genuinely to a greater cause, to the broader company that he is managing. And two, because he is focused on the people who he is working for. He is focused on their success, genuinely, wanting to hear them out and genuinely trying to figure out what it is that they could improve on. If you're undertaking the task just so that you feel better about yourself in your own eyes, you're contaminating the motivation. Yeah. The better motivation is this mentoring motivation. And I think it really is. It's a cause for optimism that that's such a deep source of meaning, you know, because you know as well as I do that there are lots of young people we'll talk about young men for a moment who feel lost it's like where am i going to find the meaning in my life and if you can let people know that one of the deepest possible sources of meaning that you can tap that's more or less un it's unfathomable right it never stops giving is the meaning that comes as a consequence of working on behalf of the appropriate development of other people. Yeah, uh, when people come to me and they say, well, I just don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my goals should be. Yeah. I'm just kind of lost. Yeah. I always tell them, go, go, go help other people. Right. Go help other people. Right. L like you'll find some direction. I don't care if you go down to a soup kitchen or you go to a, a, a boys club where their kids need mentoring or they need someone to teach them how to throw a baseball or whatever the case may be, whatever you can do, you go and help people yep. and, and you're going to, you're going to find some direction really quickly. Yeah. When you realize that you're just a little bit ahead of them in life Yeah. and you can give them so much and, and that's going to be very powerful. There it is again in a nutshell, helping people. Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Albert Pine said, what we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others and the world remains and is immortal. From the ancient philosophers to the modern research on how to find our purpose, it has been shown time and time again that nothing beats finding meaning from helping other people, elevating other people is the most durable and long lasting form of happiness that trumps 
money, it trumps fame, it trumps status, it's not the amount of women that we have. These are all illusions of happiness. They are short-term gratifications. These things are also often a byproduct of helping other people and committing our lives to the service of others. Let's now watch Jordan Peterson break down why, psychologically speaking, a commitment to other people can be such a source of purpose in our lives. Yeah, well, so one of the things that psychologists discovered although not nearly enough has been made of this, is imagine we've, we've, we've discovered the basic dimensions of human temperament, extroversion, positive emotion, neuroticism, negative emotion, agreeableness, so that's like, say, aggression versus cooperation, something like that, with the, the attendant problems on both ends, conscientiousness, dutifulness, orderliness, industriousness, and creativity. Those are the five. All right, so let's look at neuroticism, proclivity to feel negative emotion. All the negative emotions clump together, so they have a common core. It's probably something like stop and leave, something like that, right? Because if you're threatened, you should freeze or get the hell out of there. So that's the core reaction around which all the negative emotions are built, and they all associate. Okay, we've been able to do analysis of traits and attitudes that are tightly associated with negative emotions. Self-consciousness is indistinguishable from negative emotion, which means, like, it's indistinguishable. In fact, in one of the major personality trait measures called the NEO-PIR, one of the early big five personality dimensions, self-consciousness is a facet of negative emotion. That's how tight it is. It's wow. the same thing. So what it means is, and this is very germane to your point, if you're thinking about yourself, you're miserable. Those are the same thing. And so then you might say, well, how do you get out of that? And you can't get out of that by not thinking about yourself. That's just gonna backfire, right? So if you're anxious and you go to a party and you think, I'm not gonna think about myself, and that's all you're <laughs> thinking about, like you're, you're dead. I used to treat my socially anxious clients, say, go to a party and do everything you can to make other people feel comfortable. So I would explain to them what I just explained to you, but I would say, that doesn't mean you can stop thinking about yourself. It means you can start only thinking about what you can provide to other people. And that was invariably an improvement on the strategy that they had been using. Don't think about a white elephant. I bet you were just thinking about a white elephant. This is the paradox of trying to change our mindset, even in a positive direction. Oftentimes, we try to just wail ourselves out of whatever mental difficulties that we're facing. Sometimes what we need is a distraction. Sometimes what we need is a shift in focus, a shift in perspective. We almost have to trick our brains in order to get it to cooperate with us. And one way that Jordan Peterson is explaining here of doing this is simply by shifting our focus from ourselves to other people. One more point about this, it's really harnessing the power from the fact that we are only able to focus on one thing at a given time. For all we might have to say about our multitasking abilities, the fact is that when we think we are multitasking, we are just quickly switching between different tasks. But at any given moment, our brains are focused on just that one task that's in front of us. We're not able to think about multiple things at the same time. So while our subconscious might have some ideas percolating in the background, every given second is focused on one idea. But to bring it back to the topic at hand, focusing on other people is a great way to divert our attention from that misery that we feel while we wallow in self-pity and self-consciousness. And instead, placing that focus on other people in a way that has a multitude of benefits, not only from the fact that those people would appreciate the fact that there is someone looking out for them, but also from the natural feelings of, I would say, euphoria, if we're really doing it right, that we feel from helping other people. There's something very rewarding about helping other people in a way that actually makes a difference in their lives. But this, this is so crucially important, you know, because we are so reciprocal as human beings that you are lost if you only serve your own whims. It doesn't work in the long run. It alienates people. It, it produces a life that's devoid of meaning. It makes you anxious and isolated. And it makes you self-conscious and miserable. And so it is the case, as we alluded to earlier, that 
perversely enough, the best possible thing that you can do for yourself, all things considered over the longest possible run, is to work as hard as you can on behalf of what's best in other people. Yeah, and and you and I talked about this the last time, I forget, it was a couple of years ago, I think, but I was talking, or you asked me what makes a good seal, like mm -hmm. what makes a good mm -hmm. seal, mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, it's, doesn't matter, uh, look, you gotta be a good shot, of course. You yep. gotta be in good physical condition. All those things are important. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta have the skill set. But far and away, what makes a good seal is someone that puts the team before themselves. Mm. That's it. That's the thing. And if you're the if Jordan, if you're the best shot, you're the fastest, you're the strongest, but you have yourself above the team, I don't want you in my platoon. Mm -hmm. And no one wants you in the platoon. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. So it, it's interesting that psychologically. Mm. If you're focused on yourself, it's going to cause problems. Either the problem of egocentric arrogance yeah. or the problem of like paranoia or what would yeah. you just use to describe it? I mean, yeah. when, when someone's just focused self -consciousness. on self-consciousness, self-consciousness. Yeah. I want to close off this video with advice for myself and for other people like myself who are very independent minded. And while we might have the best interests of others at heart and while we might be willing to help out other people, it does not come through as obviously as other people who might be more social creatures. The problem here is that people go off of perception more than they go off of the real value of something. The difference between, for example, cooking food for someone or buying food from the grocery store is not the fact that they are going to be nourished by the food, right? It's the fact that you put in that effort. It's that perception for them. And there are so many examples of this where people are not looking for the actual value of what you provide. I think it's that saying that people don't care what you say, I think it goes, but they care how you make them feel. It's the essence of that is what I'm trying to capture here, which is that it's all about perception. That's not to say we shouldn't try to provide long lasting value for people and we should only give them the illusion of that. But it is to say that we have to be intentional in the way that we align these two things. We have to appreciate the fact that optics does matter. And sometimes, unfortunately, it diverges from real value. But this is important because if the optics are not right, if they're not well aligned with the value that we're aiming to provide for other people, it can actually set a roadblock because other people might be more shut off to us. They might perceive things that aren't true. They might think we're selfish. They might think that we're just out for ourselves when in fact we are more concerned about what truly matters. But again, the only way to make this obvious is by being more intentional in trying to align up these two things. I hope that makes sense. This is a struggle that I've dealt with myself and that I feel I could improve on. I hope there is some insight in there that some of you might find helpful. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.